All right, what is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. Uh, in this video, we're literally just gonna cover the beginning portion of my uh, training session, which is deadlift focus, okay? So I'm getting back into strength training eventually. I have two strongman comps. I got a pro show in October and then another pro show after that. Uh, so I just wanna go through kind of my warm up for the deadlift and just more deadlift information. Uh, I actually had tweaked my back during a really long deadlifting prep. It's one of those things that just kind of happened out of the blue. Uh, and with that, you know, my philosophies are always changing with how I handle injury, injury prevention, pain management, etc. And I want to give you the guys this crazy disclaimer. Disclaimer. None of this that I'm doing is supported by science other than the fact that probably the placebo effect is the best effect in the entire world. You can't use it on Premiere Pro, but you can use it in real life. So, uh, I do this, it makes me feel better, which in return makes my performance better as the effect. So, I'm not saying science evi or, or science, uh, you know, says any of this works, okay? A lot of it probably says it doesn't work. That's all. So now let's do it. All right, guys, so first one we're gonna do is uh, bird dog, okay? Typically, I do this for about 10 to 15 reps per side. So we're not even touching a barbell yet. We're just trying to prime some of the muscles that I'll be using. And this probably, this whole thing takes about uh, 10 minutes, okay? If you're wondering, the video will be longer because we're, we're covering more detail. Uh, but basically the bird dog, okay? I'm gonna reach out with my uh, left hand and then my right leg goes back. I'm gonna come together, touch my elbow and knee and extend out like so. So we'll do that 10 to 15 per side. This is the cover of Sports Illustrated 2022, baby, called the Clamshell Edition. So, clamshell, keeping your heels together, bringing your thighs together, opening up. Really feel this in the hip and the glutes. I like these a lot. Higher reps here, we're thinking like 20 to 30 per side. Usually around 20, I'm really feeling my hip warming up. So we'll do these. Yo, Matt, throw in some like, some just techno music while I'm doing this. Uh, Mr. Zeke always loves when I lay down and stretch. He comes and gives me kisses and sticks his butt in my face. I gotta record. All right, next we're gonna do 90-90 drill. Okay, so it's basically like a modified pigeon stretch. Uh, and for this, I'm just focusing on breath cycles. So I'll probably do five to 10 breaths where I'm just taking inhale and then exhale leaning forward once again, kind of just loosening up the hips here, glutes, uh, and I'll do this for two sets per side. All right, next one from there, we're gonna go single leg hip bridge. Uh, we'll do 10 per side here for about two sets. Really trying to keep that heel close to your butt, driving the hips all the way up. I like to think about extending my knee through the ceiling when I'm doing this. Uh, just once again, glutes, hamstrings, uh, hips, all that good stuff. So next thing we have, we actually have some walking lunges. And I actually got this uh, from Muscle Doc, Jordan Shallow, and he had a good point talking about a lot of people spend a lot of time moving laterally with their hips or using something like a hip circle uh, when uh, the, the patterns for the deadlift uh, resonate more with uh, lunging, okay? And so I started incorporating a couple of these uh, lunges in my, my pre-deadlift stuff. Uh, and honestly, just felt better for me. So try it out, see if you like it. Uh, so. Basically what we're doing here, we're gonna keep an upright torso, we're gonna drive the knee up, out a little bit wider, and then drop the weight straight down. From here, we can kind of push our knee and our hip, kind of warm it up a little bit, different areas. And then the big thing is stepping straight up, knee out, down, okay? Kind of just warm those hips up. You can do whatever you want. 
Basically for these, we'll probably do uh, like five per leg for uh, a couple sets. And then after this, I'm just gonna start warming up with the barbell like I normally have done, uh, but just taking a couple extra seconds, seconds, minutes uh, for these drills have just made me feel a little bit more primed. They give me a little bit more mental focus for my training session uh, and just have my deadlift feeling a little bit better. So for deadlifts today, I'm actually just gonna do some sets of three. Uh, I'll probably do five sets of three, somewhere around 405 to 455. I'm using a deadlift bar. Uh, I have to qualify for official strongman games, and one of the qualifications is a five rep max deadlift. And I'm just trying to get uh, more familiar with the movement, slowly ramp up the weight, make sure my technique is dialed in. Uh, but anywhere in the 600s for something for a set of five, I feel like it is gonna put me in a good place. The other two qualifying events are my wheelhouse, so not too concerned about them. Uh, mainly just keeping my back healthy and getting the technique back. So using a deadlift bar, we're gonna have more whip in the bar. Some people like it, some people don't like it. In Strongman, uh, we use all different bars, uh, but typically uh, most commonly used is gonna be a deadlift bar uh, for deadlifting. So doing that, I may also uh, get a suit or try to retailer the suit that I already have uh, for deadlifting just to give me any extra assistance I can so I'll probably play with that in the future as well. Alright guys, so when I first started deadlifting, um, first of all, I kind of had a really, I would say just maybe not used back, it was weak. I had um, three kids, rather large children for my body, so I always felt like it kind of did mess up my back a little bit. Um, so I was very leery to start deadlifting. Um, so when I did start, I was around like 205, um, and honestly, like 205 pounds deadlifting for a max. Um, and I really started to feel uh, my back getting stronger, and it actually helped with a lot of just pain and weakness I was feeling. So kind of, you know, supporting those muscle groups, making them stronger. Um, now I'm kind of pulling around 300. Um, takes time, slow progression, but guys, um, it can be done and don't be afraid to lift. All right, I'm over here, freaking huffing and puffing, trying to add weight to my bar. Lo and behold, I forgot one of the greatest, newest additions to the gym has been the deadlift jack. So, trying to save some energy. Use one of these bad boys, you know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, it's a beautiful thing. Juju Mufu, when he came in here, he told me the number one thing I need in my gym, uh, based on anything, was the deadlift jack. We have a lot of guys who are pulling around 800 pounds here. That's a lot of plates. That's a lot of energy that could be used for deadlifting. So do yourself a favor, invest in a freaking deadlift jack. Alright, so I'm doing a uh, double overhand for most of my warm ups. Said in other videos, I just like working on grip strength. It's a weakness of mine. If I ever see farmers or a grip event in a strongman competition, I poop my pants and I don't sign off. But the time will come when I don't have the option to poop my pants and I have to man up and do it. So, doing that on the deadlifts for 365, put a belt on, back's feeling good. I'll go 405 instead of three and maybe get to somewhere between 405 and 455 for my five sets of three. I'll save the same weight, technique, you know, progressively, slowly getting back into it.
All right, so frequency-wise for me right now, uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of deadlifting frequency being up. And if you want to know more about that, I have a video where I talk about deadlifting two to three times per week, right up here. Uh, but starting off, since I haven't done it so long, just one time per week for me. Uh, keeping it towards the beginning of the training week so I can have a lot of mental focus, not too much accumulative fatigue. And then probably after uh, week four of doing this, I'll start integrating twice a week where I'll work on a variation. So uh, deadlift will just be on day one, then day two. Maybe it's gonna be a block pull or a deficit or something other than just a, a regular deadlift or competition deadlift. Uh, but if you guys are just getting into it, one time a week is great until it no longer works. And then I'd recommend increasing that frequency uh, with a variation. And I always start with just working on your weak point for that variation. So if you have a trouble with lockout, block pulls are great. Um, if you wanna get better off the floor, uh, slight deficit may help. And as always, uh, I was gonna say train untamed, but I didn't. That's, that's where my mind goes, shot down throw. But uh, so as always guys, reset your reps each time. Uh, obviously in competition, you can do touch and go depending on the competition, but I think if you can take the second to reset, you know, make sure you're in a good position, uh, it's just gonna help with making you more technically uh, proficient in the movement and help you better off for the long haul. All right, so if I get a set of three here, double overhand, that would be a PR for sure. I think this is where I stopped when I did it for the video of Juji. Freaking beast DK hit 600 pound double overhand. God bless that guy. He came from another dimension or the one circle of hell. Uh, but this is nowhere near as heavy, but it would be happy to hit it for me. We got a 455 for two and a half, which uh, PR, really cool. Only thing is I started feeling that pain, kind of like in my pelvis, and it happens towards like the top end of the delt. So from here to here, when I go to lock out, I get this, this like pain, this tweak. Uh, it's really weird. This is exactly what it's like. It's like if uh, someone took a pole with a needle on it and shoved it up my butt. That's what it felt like. Um, so smart man, went back down 405, and I'll do my sets there, seeing if it's more manageable. Uh, it's still allowing me to get a little bit more work in. So we're, it's just gonna be a process, guys. Like here I am, I've been doing this for a long time. I go through all the same stuff too, but it's a good day, I'm lifting. I can't like sit here and cry about it or make a big stink about it. It's something fun we enjoy and that's that. These have all been double overhand. So a way to manage fatigue, if you guys are not trying to go as heavy, no straps, you could not wear a belt either. Uh, and then no, uh, or just uh, overhand, double overhand. All right, so I get a lot of questions uh, on stance with the deadlift. There's a ton of different ways you can set up for your deadlift, uh, but a question more specifically about stance is for taller guys. So. A lot of guys who are taller have an issue uh, with just getting in the proper position. And for most taller guys, if you are tall, I think uh, the kind of more like a frog stance uh, is, is a little bit more beneficial. And what I mean by that is having your feet a little bit closer and getting a little bit of toe flare in your stance. It's gonna allow you uh, to get into a more natural deadlift position. And we're thinking about kind of driving our knees into uh, the crease of our elbow right here versus if we are wider uh, and our, our knees or our toes aren't as, as wide, it's a little bit harder for taller guys. So if you're looking to just improve your deadlift stance and somebody who's taller, for reference, I'm six foot two, so I would probably fall on that spectrum of heading into the tall zone. These are guys who are like six two plus. Uh, bring, try to just bring your stance a little bit more narrow, okay? And seeing how that feels. You'll also probably get a little bit more leg drive uh, in the deadlift. So you can play with it whether you're tall or not for that purpose alone. Uh, but just a question I get asked a lot, so I figured I'd answer it. I don't know if I've ever answered it in a video before, uh, but that's my recommendation. 
Hi, my friends. So that was pretty much it for the deadlift. I went over my new warm-up protocol. Like I said, not science-based at all, but it's just something I've been doing and makes me feel good, which helps with the deadlift. Uh, I went through my sets today, kind of talk you through what I'm feeling, what I'm doing. I was just talking to Coach Matt. Uh, we're gonna play with stance a little bit to see if it helps at all with my hip pain. I feel very strong and the movement feels great. It's just that top end uh, where I'm trying to lock it out. I'm getting a little bit of that, that hip thing going on. Uh, so maybe just playing with some stance variations will help me. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If you guys are looking to improve your deadlift, we have a deadlift specific program on zapstrength.net. So I check that out. It's gonna have a heavy emphasis. Obviously I'm pulling. Uh, there's a ton of other programs on zapstrength.net. We got hypertrophy stuff each lift specific, whether it's your squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press. We got hypertrophy programming, so lots of cool stuff, check that out. Um, we also have our Facebook group, The Iron Lions, in the Facebook search bar, just type The Iron Lions. We'll add you in, great community of like-minded individuals who are just stoked about strength training, nutrition. Uh, we do form checks, articles, etc. All the good stuff's in that group, so head over there. Uh, but until then, guys, stay lean, mean, strength machine. Catch you guys next time, peace.